Hello, hello everyone, welcome. My name is Braden, and I am in charge of the Teddy Bear Sleepover Program. This is, I think, the seventh year that I've been doing this, and unfortunately this year it's a little bit different. In past years, what we do for a Teddy Bear Sleepover is we have a special story time Friday afternoon, and kiddos can come in and listen to the story time, and they bring their favorite stuffed animal or teddy bear with them and they listen to a story and have a snack and then many children will leave their teddy bear overnight and then we take pictures of all the fun things that the animals do during the night and then the next day the children will come back and pick them up. Hopefully in the future we will be able to do that again but unfortunately we can't let anyone into, into the library right now. So I had to think about what, what do I want to do? I want to still do this program. I don't want to skip it. And I decided for this year's uh, virtual program, we were going to do a cooking demonstration. Um, I had been thinking a lot, well, you know, what would be fun to cook for children and kind of teach a child how to cook. And I recently read this book. I've, I've read it a lot in the past, and maybe you've heard me read it at one of my story times. But I read it recently with my children. It's Goldilocks, and you're, you're going to hear from Katie. She's going to read this book to you in a little bit. But in the back of the book, the author has a recipe for Papa Bear's blueberry muffins. And so I thought it might be fun to give this a shot. I cooked this, um, I baked this, uh, these blueberry muffins with my children, and I decided we would try and do it for this year's Teddy Bear Sleepover. Um, so that's what we're going to make today. We're going to make blueberry muffins. Um, I do want to mention real quick about our little stuffed animal friends here. I do have a few of them. Uh, these belong to my children. Pikachu right here belongs to my son Julian who's four years old now. I might have a funny story about that later on in the program. And then this little guy here belongs to my daughter. We've been way into watching The Mandalorian this year. And so I asked them if I could bring one of their favorite stuffed animals to the teddy bear sleepover. And those are the ones they let me bring. And this little guy here, I call him Designer. He's our uh, panda. He belongs to the library. So I invited him along as well. And yeah, I just wanted to have someone here with this. And I'll tuck them in later and put them to sleep and they can spend the night in the library. All right, so let's get started. Um, first, you got to think about it. What's the most important thing to do before we start cooking? That's right, washing your hands. It's really important, even if you've washed your hands recently, before you touch any food, it's important that you wash your hands. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to come over here to the sink. All I have is a little uh, palm olive dish soap, but that should work. Get it nice and soapy. And then rinse them off. And now my hands are all ready to make some muffins. So before I start cooking, I like to think, you know, of a plan of attack. Something, you know, I, got, I like to get my ingredients together. For today, I've already measured out most of my ingredients. You don't have to do that, but maybe you might want to pause the video and just get the ingredients all together. We're going to have the ingredients posted on our website so you can um, see what you need to grab and, and get them all ready before we start cooking. There's also a couple things I need to do to prepare. Um, the oven needs to preheat a little bit. We need to get that to 400 degrees. So I'm going to turn that on. And hopefully that's going to be ready by the time we're done uh, mixing the ingredients together. And I also want to turn on the stove a little bit there. You'll see in the ingredients that it says you need some melted butter. And so I'm going to turn that on and just put it on a low setting. I don't want it to, you know, boil or anything like that. I just want to melt the butter. Maybe you can see it inside there. We've got some butter. I also put my honey in there because I am using some raw honey. We just want to get that nice and um, just soft to add into our ingredients once they're all ready. Make sure that's going. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is we want to start mixing our dry ingredients together. The very first ingredient on the list is two cups of flour. And I have not yet got my flour ready. So uh, that's what I'm going to do now. I have my cup here. Scoop that in. And you don't have to do this next part, but I like to take my finger or a knife or something 
and just kind of make a nice clean cut across the top so that I have exactly one cup and I need a second cup so I'm going to do that again and there that's good to go okay so our next ingredient is a fourth of a teaspoon of salt so this is my salt here I've already measured it out to a fourth of a teaspoon and so I'm just gonna add that in there um, you, if you have a spoon or a spatula you can use that to just kind of get out all of the salt from the spoon and mix that in there next I have three teaspoons of baking powder so I've already got that measured out right here we'll add that in half a teaspoon oh I left a little bit in there I want to make sure to get that all in there and then I have half a teaspoon of cinnamon and then last but definitely not least is the sugar I need four tablespoons of sugar and sometimes you'll notice in recipes you'll see instead of teaspoon you'll see shorthand and then I'll say TISP or TSP and then for tablespoon so I have my little spoons here you have your, your TISP here your one teaspoon and then you can see the tablespoon is quite a bit bigger and you don't want to get confused about that they look pretty similar but the, the teaspoon is TSP and the tablespoon is TBSP or TBS and so um, I have four tablespoons of the sugar so I'm gonna put that in there make sure to get all that sugar out and then I'm gonna take my spoon and I'm just gonna mix it all together and you don't have to mix it a lot but you'll just want to make sure that there's no big lumps or anything everything's kind of just nicely all mixed and that is going to be the first part of baking our blueberry muffins I'm getting some out on the counter now <laughs> okay so we've got that mixed together next what we want to do is our wet ingredients and we're going to mix them in their own bowl and then once those are all mixed together we're going to add them to the dry ingredients and mix them all together and doing it like this helps it so that all the ingredients um, mix together well and you don't have lots of like lumps of cinnamon or lumps of baking powder or anything like that um, so first what we need is one cup of milk and I've already got my cup of milk right here put that in there and I should have turned this up higher because this is not going to be done in time After that, okay, so then I also need a beaten egg. So, I, that's also something I haven't got prepared yet. I do have some eggs here. I brought some extras just in case I mess up. But I have a little container here and I am, I'm supposed to mix it all together, so I'm just gonna crack it here. I, with my children, we do this a lot. We practice this a lot at home because they like to crack the eggs. And it's just nice just to do a little tap until you just have a little crack in the egg like that. You don't need nothing too big. Um, but just something a little small that you can kind of start to grab with your thumbs and sometimes if you hit it too hard the shells will break apart and then you have a big mess so just a little bit of a tap until you have a small crack in it and then you just take your thumbs and you just gently pull the shells apart and then the egg yolk drops out and then you can throw your egg yolk away I'm just gonna add it back in here and we'll toss it later and then we want to get that mixed up real good. If you practice that a lot, eventually you can start to do it with one hand. Sometimes I can do it. I decided not to try it today. Um, but it is kind of fun to learn how to crack an egg with just one hand. We'll make sure that's all mixed together well. And then we'll add it to our wet ingredients. And I did bring a spatula. And I'm going to use the spatula here just to make sure to get out all of the egg mixture. It's also gonna help when I get out the honey and the butter. Let's check on our oven. So it's about 286, so it should be pretty good by the time we're done. It usually takes, all ovens are different, but this oven seems to take about 10 minutes to get all um, heated up. So we're gonna mix that together a little bit. Our honey and butter are just about finished. I'm gonna mix that just to make sure that gets all done okay 
And what, what you could do, what I usually do, is I don't usually mix these together, um, but I'm not sure if we have, I have, this is all brand new to me, this demonstration kitchen. And I'm not sure we have a microwave. There is something over here that looks a little bit like a microwave, but I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to mess with it. I am just going to heat up my honey on the stove top as well. And this is just about done. Should be good enough, I think. So I'm going to turn that off. That's something you always want to keep that in mind when you're cooking is, you know, your heat source, making sure that's on and off. And it's usually better to turn it off before you take it off the stove or take something out of the oven. That way you're, you, you for sure don't forget about it. Okay, so that is all mixed together. It's nice and silky smooth. And we're going to add those to our wet ingredients. And then we're just going to mix it together. Okay. Make sure to get some of that out. All right, so that's all prepared, and our dry ingredients are all prepared. Let me double check my list just to make sure I have everything. I do, I have all the ingredients together, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. And I'm just gonna do it a little bit at a time. Just a small pour, and again, all this does is help so that you don't have any big lumps. It helps it all mix together evenly. If you have an electric mixer at home um, with beaters, that it makes this job a lot easier. You can come over here and just start, you know, it just takes just a minute or so if you have an electric mixer. And I have one at home, but I didn't bring it. So I just brought this wooden spoon. And I kind of like that too. I enjoy uh, mixing things together just with a spoon as well. Takes a little elbow grease, a little muscle, just to kind of get in there and just start mixing it together. It can take some practice too when you turn it not to knock in already. You, can, you might have noticed I've knocked out some of the flour when I was mixing it before. When I was stirring the butter and honey, some of it splashed out. Um, and you just kind of be gentle and just practice more and more. You'll get better about not splashing out of the bowl. But it's okay if you do. Okay, so this is coming along together. If you see any white powder from the flour or baking powder, you just kind of make sure to get that all mixed together. Mix, get down in the corners of the bowl just to get it all mixed together just nicely. You can see here, it's got just a nice sticky texture to it. It's perfect for our muffins. Now that we have the dry ingredients mixed together with the wet ingredients, we are ready for our blueberries. I have my blueberries over in the sink. I've already washed them. You can use just water to wash them, kind of pick out any of the like the leaves or blueberries that look smushed. And you can also use a veggie wash to wash them. But you want to wash them beforehand and maybe let them dry for a little bit. Let me grab those. So I got my blueberries here, and it calls for one cup. Now normally I would measure that out. I like to be really precise in my measurements, but all my cups are dirty now, so I am just going to eyeball it. I'm just going to kind of make a guess on how much a cup of blueberries is. I figure I have about a cup here, but maybe a little bit over, but that's not bad either. You can, you, if you like blueberries, add more than a cup. I wouldn't add too many more. That one's a bad blueberry. But if you like blueberries, add them in. I think I'm just going to add them all. I think it's pretty close to a cup of that. So we have that, and we're going to mix those together. And now here, you want to be a, just a little bit more gentle than you were before. Um, it's OK if the blueberry gets smushed, and you, know, you might see a little bit of per streaks of purple and stuff. Um, but you don't want to get too rough here, but you do want to make sure to get all the blueberries mixed in there. And that's looking really nice right now. Okay. Oh, I can see a couple streaks of purple. Something, one of the blueberries broke, I think. Now you'll notice it's not very easy to stir. It's really sticky. Takes a little muscle to move it around. Um, but just do the best you can do. Maybe you can get an uh, older brother or sister to help or your mom or dad and help them mix these blueberries together. But I think these, this mixture and these blueberries are ready to go into the muffin, tin, uh, the muffin pan. So 
I have my muffin pan here. And I also have some canola spray. Some people have Pam, whatever you have works great. Um, you can also take a little olive oil and just put it on a paper towel and wipe it in there. But it's important that you grease up the pan a little bit that way the, the muffins don't stick once they're done cooking. So just little short bursts of canola spray just to make sure that the muffins don't stick. And now we are ready to add our mixture. So what I like to do is the recipe says to get about two thirds of a cup full. Now it depends on how big your muffin pan is, but mine isn't too big. And so it's a little bit hard to get it at two thirds full. So I just take a smallish spoonful. You can see already that first one, it's a little bit more than two thirds. Oh, I just heard the beep. That means our oven is preheated at 400 degrees. It's ready to go. I think I'm just going to have to start using my finger to get all of the sticky batter into the muffin tray. While I'm doing this, I'll tell you a story about that Pikachu there. Um, a couple years ago, so my son is four now. A couple years ago, he was two. And we went to Silverwood Theme Park and he was fascinated with the games they had there like those carnival games where you throw darts and um, wiffle balls and things trying to win a prize and he didn't care so much about the prize he just wanted to play one of the games so i paid five dollars for him to play the little game where you have the little red plastic rings and you try and throw them on the coke bottles and if you get one on a Coke bottle, then you win a prize. And if I remember right, there were different, there were some Coke bottles that had a bigger prize. And anyway, he took, I think he had three rings and his first toss, he didn't even get them on the Coke bottles. Like he didn't even reach it. It's just like what maybe a foot into the gutter they had before the Coke bottles. And the same with the second one. And I was like, oh my gosh, he just, we just spent five dollars <laughs> for him to throw these plastic rings into the gutter but the third ring he threw and it went right on the large prize winner coke bottle and he got to pick whatever uh, stuffed animal he wanted from the prizes and that's the one he chose Pikachu and I had to carry it around the rest of the day but it was great he was so excited and we were excited too it was just amazing just very kind of a just a very lucky trick shot um, okay, so I've got all of my muffin tin filled up. I'm just gonna, I got a little more batter here. It's gonna make the muffin tops extra large. They may get um, pretty big, but I just wanna make sure I add all of this in here. Don't have any leftover. Okay. All right, and my fingers are very sticky. I'm just gonna get a paper towel here and wipe my fingers off. We've got most of the batter inside the muffin tin, and I think we're just about ready to put it inside the oven. So, one thing you can do once you have it here is maybe you can just shake it a little bit. This batter is pretty thick. It's not really moving around at all, but it just kind of helps to settle it a little bit. You could also bang it on the counter gently a couple times. I'm not going to do that because it might be kind of loud. Um, but, yeah, it hasn't really changed a whole lot. <laughs> but that's something you can try with other like muffins that you make. And then we're going to go ahead and stick it in the oven. And you, we need to put it in there for 20 to 25 minutes. All ovens are different. And so what you want to do is you want to keep a close eye on it after about maybe even 15 minutes, uh, depending on if your oven cooks fast or not. Um, I will definitely be keeping an eye on this at about 20 minutes. Um, but basically what you want to look for is just a nice golden uh, color to your muffins and they'll, they'll, they'll puff up and they'll look beautiful uh, but you want to make sure there's just a nice golden color you don't want to take it out too early um, but yeah and the longer you leave it in the more gold they'll get until they start to burn and so you want to make sure you take it out before they start to get too brown uh, but I think that's it I am I think what I'm going to do now is send you over to Katie and she is going to read the Goldilocks book to you so you can find out where this recipe comes from see you soon bye Hi guys, it's Katie from Family's First Learning Lab. Thanks for joining us today for our teddy bear sleepover. I have a special book to read to you called Goldilocks 
and the Three Bears. It's retold and illustrated by Ruth Sanderson, and we have permission from Crocodile Books to read this. Thanks a lot, and let's get started. Once upon a time, there were three bears that lived in a little stone cottage deep in the woods, a great big papa bear, a middle-sized mama bear, and a wee little baby bear. Every morning, the bears took a walk while their porridge was cooling off. One day, the bears were still on their walk when a visitor arrived at their house. Her name was Goldilocks. Goldilocks loved to pick blueberries. That morning, she wandered from bush to bush to bush, and before she knew it, she was standing in front of a cottage she had never seen before. She wondered who lived there and knocked on the door. When no one answered, Goldilocks forgot her manners and walked right in. Goldilocks smelled the, bear, the bear's porridge and rushed over to the table. She was very hungry. First, she tasted the porridge in the great big bowl, but it was too hot. Then she tasted the porridge in the middle-sized bowl, but it was too cold. Finally, she tasted the porridge in the wee little bowl, and it was just right. Goldilocks ate it all up, every bite. Across the room, Goldilocks saw three chairs in front of a cozy fireplace. She tried to sit in the biggest chair, but it was too high. She tried to sit in the middle chair, but it was too wide. Finally, she sat in the wee little chair and it was just right. But Goldilocks rocked so hard in the chair, she broke it to pieces. Goldilocks began to feel tired after all of her adventures. She peered through a doorway and saw three beds. She climbed into the biggest bed, but it was too hard. She climbed into the middle bed but it was too soft. Finally, she climbed into the wee little bed and it was just right. Goldilocks pulled up the quilt to her chin and fell fast asleep. When the three bears returned home and found their front door wide open, they ran inside. Someone's been tasting my porridge, said Papa Bear in his great big voice. Someone's been tasting my porridge, said Mama Bear in her middle-sized voice. Someone's been tasting my porridge, said Baby Bear in his wee little voice. And it's all tasted away. The three bears discovered a mess across the room. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear in his great big voice. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear in her middle-sized voice. Someone's been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear in his wee little voice. And it's broken all to pieces. The three bears peeked into the bedroom to see what they'd find. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Papa Bear with a great big growl. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Mama Bear, with a medium-sized growl. Someone's been sleeping in my bed, said Baby Bear, with a wee little growl. And she's there. At the sound of Baby Bear's shrill voice, Goldilocks woke up with a start. She was so afraid she could not speak. Can I keep her, asked Baby Bear. No, dear, said Mama Bear, but you can keep an eye on her while she makes up the beds. Baby Bear played with his blocks while Goldilocks straightened up the quilts. Then she followed Baby Bear to the other room where Mama Bear was leaving a new seat for his chair. May I help? asked Goldilocks. Mama Bear smiled at Goldilocks and handed her some canes and showed her how to weave them in and out. Papa Bear made new legs for the chair and soon it was good as new and Baby Bear was still not happy. Uh-oh, I wonder why. 
Mama, said Baby Bear in his wee little voice. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too, said Mama Bear in her middle-sized voice. I'm very, very hungry, said Papa Bear in his great big voice. Goldilocks backed away from the three bears. Were they going to eat her for breakfast? Then she saw her basket near the door. Goldilocks had an idea. Blueberries are very good for breakfast, said Goldilocks. Blueberries are tasty, said Baby Bear in his wee little voice. But I know something even tastier, said Mama Bear in her middle-sized voice. And we have all the ingredients, said Papa Bear in his great big voice. He smiled a great big toothy smile. Mama Bear smiled at Goldilocks and Baby Bear smiled a wee little smile. Oh boy, said Baby Bear. Uh-oh. Blueberry muffins, he cheered. Baby Bear brought out a jar of honey to the table. Papa Bear poured the blueberries into a big bowl and Mama Bear took out flour, baking soda, salt, milk, butter, and eggs. Papa Bear stirred the ingredients together, spooned the batter into the muffin tin, and popped it into the oven. Mama Bear put the kettle on, and Goldilocks helped Baby Bear set the table. Sounds like something you guys are making. And they all had tea and blueberry muffins warm from the oven. And this last page is the page with the recipe of the yummy blueberry muffins that you made with Braden. Let's go upstairs and check and see how they're doing right now. Welcome back everyone. Uh, I hope you like the story that Katie read and you found out why we have this recipe of blueberry muffins. My favorite illustration in that book is when all of the bears are looking at Goldilocks and I think Papa Bear is drooling a little bit and you're wondering like, oh my gosh, are they going to eat her? But no, they're going to have blueberry muffins. We also had some blueberry muffins. We took it out of the oven. We couldn't wait to eat it. So designer here couldn't finish his. Pikachu's already finished his and he's zonked out for the night. And little Groku here is trying to take my muffin, but it's time for him to go to bed as well. Hopefully you have one of your stuffed animal friends with you. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the video and followed along and made your own muffins and that you have had a chance to taste them and they taste delicious. I'm sure they do. Um, hopefully next year all of us will be back together again at the library and we can have one of our actual real live teddy bear sleepovers but until then, enjoy the video, enjoy cooking. Maybe we'll have to start cooking more in this demonstration kitchen. Let us know if you'd like to see more of these cooking videos. Bye everyone. Don't touch that. Bye.